So a lot of anglers are, uh, you know, they're concerned about the number, uh, these runs that come back to the Columbia River. In fact, the whole Northwest region. But on the Columbia, which is the Northwest biggest salmon producer, despite all its problems, uh, what people need to understand perhaps is, or maybe don't realize, is that if you, from a, from a, you know, a big view perspective, on the Columbia River Basin, this habitat that rears salmon, half the salmon's habitat has been blocked by dams. Half of it is gone because it's above dams where there's no fish ladders. Of the habitat that remains in the Columbia River system, 70% of it is in Idaho. 70% of the remaining habitat. And the rivers up there that haven't been dammed have with no access above them. The, it's the best habitat in the basin. You know, the whole Frank Church Wilderness Area, for example, was a stat. One of the big reasons it was established as a wilderness area is to protect salmon there on the Salmon River. Um, but an issue with the, all those miles, 5,500 miles of, of river habitat up there, is that there's eight dams that stand between there and the ocean. Eight dams. It's not that any one dam impacts the fish so much. It's a cumulative effect of eight dams. For example, the upriver bright run of Chinook that we all talk about at Bui Tan and catch in the fall in the Columbia River, those fish have to pass four dams to get up into the Hanford Reach, the last free flowing stretch of the Columbia. And there are years that that little 30 mile section will put a half million or more fish back to the mouth of the Columbia River. It's the last big run of wild fish in the Columbia. Is that, is that fall Chinook upriver bright run, URBs. The Snake River, of course, those fall Chinook that spawn in the lower Snake River, or the mid Snake River, you might say, because the lower river has four dams on it, those fall Chinook are much less productive because they have four more dams, the four on the Columbia, the four on the lower Snake to pass before they get up into that region. The thing you hear about people talking about is, hey, these runs of fish going to that 70% of the habitat in the upper basin are going extinct. Wild fish in particular are going extinct. And if we lose the wild fish, we are gonna lose the hatchery fish eventually. It's just the way it goes. You gotta have that genetic diversity of those wild fish. There are some rivers up there, for example, that when it comes to spring chinook, they're down to like 50 fish. So we are at a crossroads of whether or not we're gonna allow those fish to go ahead and go extinct, or we're gonna maybe breach those four dams, remove those four dams on the lower snake and recover those fish runs. So that the smolt to adult ratio, the number of fish returning, going out as smolts and returning as adults can get up to a level similar to those upper river brights to where they can recover, rebound, into the Snake River system. Of course, those four dams on the Lower Snake, there are some industries, groups, that depend on those for maybe their, their livelihood, right? So it's a big contentious issue. You know, are we gonna maintain those dams and let the salmon go extinct on 70% of the remaining habitat? Or are we gonna breach those dams and try to keep everybody whole or create new jobs in that region? A Republican congressman in Idaho by the name of Mike Simpson has come up with a plan to breach those dams and keep everybody in the region whole and really set the region up for the next 50 years of prosperity in that region. For example, yeah, Lewiston will no longer be a port if we breach those dams. Well, okay, Lewiston isn't a port. Well, currently, 80% of the commodities that come down the Columbia River come out of Tri-Cities on the Columbia side, below those dams. It's only 20% that comes out of Lewiston. So, okay, if those shippers up there need subsidized freight, Simpson's plan would take care of them. If you, you know, there's one or two of those, those dams that are irrigated out of, there's been far more ambitious uh, projects to irrigate out of a free-flowing river. You don't have to do it out of a reservoir. Simpson's plan has money in there to do that and keep those businesses whole. And it goes right down the line. In fact, his plan in the initial uh, version 
called for like $30 billion of federal money as part of the stimulus to keep everybody whole. Well, breaching the dams cost about $2 billion. So, you know, there's maybe close to $30 billion that's going to be used instead to keep everybody whole, to set up power storage, maybe more renewables, improve the highways so we can continue to ship products, you know, from that Lewiston Clarkson area, uh, cheaply through that area. Everything you can imagine. But of course, people are fighting it. Well, those people that are fighting it, maybe they don't care about salmon. Or maybe they do, but they have the delusion that we can keep those dams and recover salmon. I'm here to tell you, that, is, that isn't gonna happen. We, if we're gonna save these fish on the upper Columbia Basin, that, re, that involves 70% of the remaining habitat, those dams need to be breached. And uh, it's the biggest natural resource issue in the nation today. And for all those out there that care about salmon and want to see these fisheries rebound, it's what we need to do. They need to get behind it. They need to work at it. Tell everybody, write their congressman, write their senator, and let them know that salmon, an infinitely renewable resource, is important and we need to act and we need to act now. That's my message on the Columbia River. Imagine that little 30 mile section of the Columbia that produces some years brings a half a million or more fish back to the Columbia, back to the mouth of the Columbia. Um, if you breach those dams on the Lower Snake, you would free up roughly 130 miles of fall Chinook spawning habitat. How many salmon would that bring back to the Columbia River? We would stop the slide, the continuous slide of the wild spring Chinook and summer Chinook going to the snake, not to mention steelhead. All those runs would begin to recover because we would improve that smolt to adult return rate to the point that would, they, those runs could begin to rebuild. And uh, that's what needs to happen. Every scientist I know, every biologist I know that's familiar with the subject and studied it maybe their whole career, that's what they say needs to happen. So. You know, and some people will say, well, gosh, we're going to We need the power that those dams produce. Well, yeah, OK. Do you do you have you have you read? Do you know? Do you realize that wind and solar have already placed replaced the power produced by those dams nine? I think it's nine or nine, nine times or more. I mean, how many times do we have to replace that power through through green energy before we say, hey, that power isn't that important. Only 4% of the power in the Columbia Basin is produced by those four dams. All the other dams are going to stay in place. They're important to the region. But the four lower snake dams, they need to go if we're going to recover salmon. I'm tired. My whole career, those dams have been killing too many fish to allow fishing in a lot of cases. And I'm tired of it. I... You know, it's, I mean, I got calls from a few people. Oh, I don't know about your stand on these dams. Hey, wait a minute. If they think Buzz Ramsey is going to sign up for salmon extermination, they are wrong. So that's my message. If you care about salmon, let's make it happen. Let's encourage our political leaders to make it happen. Do the right thing. So if the dams were breached on the Lower Snake River, if those four dams were were uh, removed, you know, and the proposal isn't to remove the concrete side. Each of those dams has a concrete side and it has a uh, earthen fill side. And the idea would be to remove the earthen fill side. I guess if you didn't, theoretically, if you didn't like salmon recovery, you could put the dirt back, you know. Um, but, uh, but, and I want to reiterate, you know, we can have dams and salmon. But the four dams on the Lower Snake, the cumulative impact of those four and the four on Lower Columbia is gonna take those fish to extinction if we don't do something. To me, we can't let the infinitely renewable resource of the, that those fish represent, those genetics, genetics represent, go away. We just can't do it. We can't let the Northwest iconic salmon on the 70% of the remaining habitat in the Columbia River go away. And if we got to breach those dams, and then what I like about Simpson's plan is it theoretically, and he has really worked hard on this, you know, over 300, I think it's over 300 meetings 
with different groups, user groups, about what we, what if, what if we did this? And he's worked, done his best to try to keep everybody whole and even enhance the region with with uh, with federal money that would would keep everybody whole or improve and bring a lot of new jobs to the region. So, so that's what I like about the plan. It doesn't cut anybody out. You know, yeah, there'll be some change, but it doesn't cut everybody out. And it restores our iconic Northwest fish. But what would it do to the region? What would it mean for fishing? <laughs> well, first off, as I might have mentioned previously in our, our talk, is that if those dams were breached, it would open a, roughly 130 miles of fall Chinook habitat in the main stem Snake River. Many, several times more than is represented within the Hanford Reach right now, which sometimes returns upriver brights the number of half million strong. So can you imagine adding, I don't know how many, who knows how many, but I hate to say numbers, but I mean, our fall Chinook run, upriver brights could begin being maybe on good years, a million or more, maybe, maybe even more than that. But the summer, the, the spring Chinook, the summer Chinook, the steelhead, those runs would begin to rebound. That small to adult ratio would be similar to that of the Hanford Reach and other areas that are maybe on those rivers that are only above three or four dams. Those small to adult ratios would, it would uh, begin to be at that rate, which would allow those fish to recover. And, and remember, we still have hatcheries up there that raise fish. They would be, they, they, these dams don't discriminate. When they kill those juvenile sal salmon and steelhead as they're going downstream, they kill both hatchery and wild fish at about the same rate. And so those fish would really recover. We would probably see uh, spring Chinook runs, maybe number as many as a half million. Summer Chinook, you know, into the Snake River system would begin to rebound where we wouldn't have restrictive fisheries on them. A lot of things would just, fishing would be better than the old days, really, in many respects, at least for any generate any part of our people that are alive, <laughs> it would be, it would be uh, represent a lot better fishing, and it would affect jobs related to sport fishing from here from here to Alaska. These fish, a lot of the fish coming out of the Columbia Basin, they're north turning. They travel up the coast all the way to the Gulf of Alaska, which is a big feeding area. And there's sport anglers, commercial anglers that rely on those fish all the way through that region. There are south turning stocks that go down into the, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but there are two big feeding areas for salmon in the ocean. One is the Gulf of Alaska, that's the biggest feeding area, which is why a lot of these fish are programmed to go north. But they're south turning off the southern Oregon and northern California, California coast, there are deep ocean canyons that funnel nutrient rich water near shore. And that's why there's a segment of the Columbia salmon population that goes south to feed in those areas. And a lot of the fish coming out of the Rogue or the Sacramento, that's their destination. And when things are tough ocean-wise, they, they're in a pretty narrow little area down there. But when ocean conditions are really good, they spread out up and down the coast. And uh, so, so all those stocks would, uh, would recover and uh, it would be a big deal. And uh, so anyway, that's my pitch. <laughs> and uh, if you're interested in the salmon recovery, help us make it happen.